Earlier this year, I wrote a story called Bodak Green, and it was about how investors had been pouring money into music catalogs, the likes of Cardi B's Bodak Yellow, songs like that, all rolled into one asset. Um, and kind of the incredible thing about these catalogs is that they're now available to invest in in these kind of smaller chunks. So as a retail investor, you could be putting in thousands of dollars as opposed to tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars, which used to be the minimum barrier to entry uh, to, to start to have a, a stake in some of these musical assets. In the old days, pretty much the only way you could buy a piece of a song would be um, to go in and actually purchase a massive catalog, uh, you know, going back to the days of Michael Jackson buying the ATV publishing catalog for $47.5 million in the mid 80s. That was home to most of the Beatles' biggest hits. These days, you actually have a few companies like Royalty Exchange where they do the heavy lifting and, and basically you can go in and buy a smaller slice, uh, as tiny as a few thousand dollars, of one of your favorite artists' uh, big songs or catalogs. I had had my eye on Royalty Exchange for a while and wanted to write about it, but you know, before I kind of really dug in, I wanted to make sure I had a, a main character for the story and found this guy named Alex Guiva. He settled in Texas as a finance wizard, basically, uh, at a boutique investment firm. And he had um, a bunch of money lying around and he didn't really want to put it all in something that was correlated to the stock market. So as a music fan, he decided, you know, why not um, invest in royalties? And uh, so he went through Royalty Exchange and, and actually got into Bodak Yellow by investing in, in a stream that one of the producers or um, songwriters on it had, had put up for auction. So the funny part about the story is that he didn't actually know the song. He just saw the numbers on it and you know, the kind of revenue it was throwing off on a quarterly basis and decided that he would make the jump and you know, turned out to be uh, quite a big hit, <laughs> very fortunately for him. It's not like Cardi B is out there and you know putting up her song on Royalty Exchange or any of these platforms necessarily. It, more likely, the way that these assets um, make it to the market is that, you know, on a typical pop song or hip hop song, there could be a handful or even in some cases dozens of writers and producers and different people who have credits on the song, even though their name is not on the track, uh, when you see it pop up in Spotify or Apple Music, they're getting paid for it and they can sell all or part of their royalty stream to that song or to that batch of songs on, on one of these platforms. This model of selling royalties is a lot better for recording artists and songwriters than the old model where you would hear these horror stories of you know musicians selling their catalogs for a Cadillac or even a bottle of wine. Uh, in this case, on these services, you know, you, if you're a musician, you can sell a chunk of your royalty stream. You can sell, you know, part of an individual song. You can sell it for a set period of years. One of the really attractive things about investing in music royalties is that, in theory, they're not um, linked to the overall market, right? So, if the Dow is crashing or the Nasdaq is crashing. Um, it doesn't really have any effect on how much people are going to be listening to music in aggregate. Investing in music royalties is, is kind of a counterintuitive business because you might think, oh, you want to get in early on a song and you know, ride the wave. But actually, if you get in on something like Bodak Yellow right when it comes out, you'll probably see it's churning out a, a, you know, a, a pretty lucrative royalty stream in the beginning and then it kind of peters out over the, the course of time. If you look at catalogs like old school Tupac songs are up there and you know have been getting a very steady um, amount of spins and, and throwing off a steady amount of money for decades. So not to say that you shouldn't invest in big songs if they come up for sale early on but um, you know I think any investor veteran type in this industry would tell you just be wary and know that the early returns are not the same as the long tail returns are going to be. Definitely don't go investing all of your free cash into music royalties or anything. Uh, you know, I think, you know, even the most aggressive people would only say, you know, like max 20% of your portfolio, but probably try to keep it to, to about 10%.